Right everyone, welcome back, hope we're all having a great day and we're all doing well. So we're going to be continuing our series where we take a look at the lore and the backstories of all the operators in Rainbow Six Siege. And for this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the icon of Siege himself, the poster boy, the hammer man, and the guy who's Scottish just like me. I'm of course talking about Sledge. Before we continue though, I just want to quickly say we are on the road to 50,000 subscribers, so if it's your first time on the channel and you do go on to enjoy this video, please consider subscribing as all your support means the world. And without further ado, let's get into this. So Sledge, whose real name is Seamus Cowden, was born in John O'Groats in Scotland. It's a village which is popular for tourists at the very north of Scotland, as it is one end of the longest distance between two points on the British mainland, with this point being at the north and then the other point being at the south at the bottom of England, known as Land's End. Due to the distance between these two points, they are both very popular tourist attractions. And Sledge was born into a military father and a nurse mother. And when he was five years old, they moved him and his three siblings to Inverness which is about 120 miles south of John O'Groats. During his time growing up as a teenager, his athleticism got him to the position of captain of the 1998 Scotland National Under-20 Rugby Union team, and following it in his family's footsteps, he joined the 3rd UK Mechanised Division of the British Army at the age of 18. Sledge's first assignment was in the Armoured Division where he studied engineering and specialised in upgrading the infantry combat vehicles. From there, he developed various breaching tactics. He was then recruited to the SAS where he holds multiple records in speed and strength. An expert in mechanical, ballistic, explosive and thermal breaching strategies, Sledge is the operator to choose for quick and relatively silent destruction. He was then recruited into Team Rainbow in 2015, joining as one of the tallest operators in the team at 6 foot 4, which is roughly 1.92 meters. And when he was still alive, Dr. Harishva Pandey, the previous director of Team Rainbow, actually done a psychological report on Sledge, and we can learn quite a few things from it. So Harry said, it's part of my job to understand where the country shapes a person, and specialist Seamus Sledge Cowden seems indelibly shaped by the rugged terrain where he was born. It isn't just his imposing presence and athleticism. I can't help but feel that his personality evokes the wilderness as well. He's stoic and proud, though admits that he can be hot-headed at times. Field reports describe his courage, leadership, and extensive operational experience as much as they mention his unpredictability. He's much more than a gentle giant as some suggest. Cowden is something of a raconteur, and for much of our discussion, he told me one rowdy tale after another. When he was 12, he cobbled a hang glider together out of boat sails and launched himself off his house. He broke both ankles. During military training, he accidentally collapsed his entire sleeping barrack whilst testing a new breaching technique, and another time, he sank a captain's motorcycle by riding it off the pier because he wanted to see how far it would travel on the surface. Not far, I gather. His stories aren't just to entertain, they help establish a comfortable connection. It's such a casual, offhand leadership style. Cowden views his fellow operators as family, specialist Mike Thatcher Baker in particular, who he credits for convincing him to switch to the Kaber, and that is his sledgehammer. Numerous rainbow operators refer to Sledge as one of the easiest operators to work with. Overall, Cowden is easygoing and unpretentious, though he gets ruffled at the mention of politics. A self-proclaimed news junkie, he doesn't shy away from debates. In fact, it's the reason he joined the military and why one of his brothers is currently an elected MP. Cowden understands that while on assignment, rainbow operators don't voice their political opinions, and so far there hasn't been any issues. We should trust that he can control his hot-headedness, at least before he's down at the pub. And that was the previous director of Team Rainbow, Dr. Harishra Pandey, talking about Sledge. And so, since the reactivation of Team Rainbow, Sledge has been a loyal and strong operator to the team. So of course he uses a sledgehammer known as a caber, and this has become one of the most iconic pieces of Rainbow Six Siege, is the trophy at SI. Most QRs on it as well will have Sledge on it. Sledge has been made to kind of be the poster boy of Rainbow Six Siege, since the sledgehammer is such an easy thing to understand, it can be quite iconic, and it's the easiest gadget to use in the game without being bad. And now we actually have a little evaluation on the sledgehammer by Sledge himself. And you may be wondering, I thought Mira usually does these evaluations, and she does. We actually get to learn why Mira isn't doing it in this evaluation. So what Sledge says is, I'm told you want to have a look-see at my Brucey. Why? No offense, Mira, but I don't need someone mocking up my caber trying to make it look sexier. When Mike's uncle built it for me, sorry, Specialist Bloody Mike Thatcher Bloody Baker, he damn well made me forge the thing over and over again until we got it right. It's a solid piece, no forge well to introduce weak points. It's made with a differential heat treatment to better transmit the shock of blows along the core, and the shaft is covered in fiberglass molded to my hand span for better grip. It's a solid 4140 steel, built for shock and stress, balanced to prevent it from being too top heavy. I don't need laser sights put on the damn thing, I can promise you that if any of your techies come near Brucey, as the saying goes, it will kill. And that's actually Sledge talking about his sledgehammer, which he calls Brucey. 
And one of the major things we actually get to learn here is the fact that Thatcher's uncle was actually the person that forged the hammer for him. This really goes to show how good a relationship that Thatcher and Sledge actually have. Now Thatcher isn't the only person who has quite a good friendship with Sledge. We do know that him and Maestro have quite good personal ties as well. They actually done a joint operation in Iraq before Team Rainbow was reactivated, to the point where Maestro has actually invited Sledge over to his house to meet his family. But we do know that Sledge and Thorn have actually known each other for quite a long time as well. And Sledge actually said the following about Thorn. There's a lot to be said about Thorn. Considering I've known her for quite some time, we haven't been in contact in a while, but her right hook leaves a lasting impression that I won't soon forget. She's a dedicated woman, stubborn, doesn't take anyone's rubbish. She's a good choice for a recruit. You'd have trouble finding another soldier as strong or as smart. Her infamous obstacle course represents her perfectly in that sense, and as you said it yourself, that thing's as hard as it gets. We have a solid team, but Brianna is bound to round it out perfectly. You never have to worry about her being on the top of her game, and if we're lucky, she'll kick a few of us in the backside for motivation. When she's not so guarded, she's forthcoming with her time, and she'll help anyone who she feels needs it. On that subject, she treats people as well as they treat her. She's got a smile and a hug for her pals, and nothing but aches and pains for anyone who messes with her or what she stands for. Her four brothers always gave her a rough time, so don't be surprised at how common the word bully is in her vocabulary. I'll spare you the stories, she can tell you those herself if she wants. She's already told Mira, judging from that insane contraption she designed for her. Territorial is one way to put it. Walking into its warning zone is like a cactus kindly telling you that you're about to step on it barefoot. It's no less terrifying, but at least you get to adjust. It's sharp, bright, and beautifully crafted. With the Invitational coming up, I'm sure Brianna will fit in and maybe push our team to victory. The others will have to double their efforts just to keep up with us, and I certainly won't complain about that. I'll see you both in training. And that's actually what Sledge had to say about Thorn, and up until this point, Sledge hadn't really done anything other than just serving as an operator, going on missions, and participating in training. But this all changed in early 2023, while serving under the Red Hammer squad, Sledge actually was part of a joint operation between Red Hammer and Ghost Eyes to recover the stolen Nighthaven gear. However, we quickly do learn that this was actually a trap set by Deimos. The new villain in Rainbow Six Siege, if you do not know who he is, I actually do have a video going into detail of who he actually could be and what we know so far about him. And this trap was actually rigged with a bomb and this actually did injure Sledge, Zofia, Kivera, Ash and Thermite. And at the current time of upload, that's as far as we know about Sledge, that is his history, that is his operator lore. And at the current time of upload, all we know is that he has been injured by Deimos and we do not know what state he is in. However, that changes nothing about his backstory and I hope what you actually did learn about Sledge was interesting and I'm really interested to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. So guys, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to drop this video a like and consider subscribing. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy, dislike it or not. So catch you all later. I love you all. Stay safe. Peace.